I'm Steve Ray Jeff, the rod designer at G. Loomis. I started off this enjoyment part of fishing when I was a little kid. Caught my first little trout in Tuolumne River in Yosemite in, in, in Northern California. And just from one thing to another, I learned how to do different types of fishing for bass or for catfish or carp or whatever it would be. And I just had this keen interest. I wanted to fish. I loved being out there and catching the fish and being where the water was and the birds and everything like that. So I just had that uh, appreciation and I wanted that. And the closest thing that I could find to it, closest to my parents' house in the city, was the Golden Gate Angling and Casting Club inside of Golden Gate Park. And uh, there's an actual series of pools in the park there that are designed specifically for people to go out and learn how to cast. And around about age 10, 9 or 10, I wanted to learn fly fishing because when we were up in the Sierras, we'd sometimes see the fly fishers catch more fish than we could uh, using our whatever, uh, eggs or worms. So um, I just went out there with an old beater outfit and started flailing away. And lo and behold, a member of the club came over and said, hey, let, let us help you out. And, and one of my very first instructors was Mel Krieger. He said, okay, I'll show Steve how to fly cast. And Mel had just started a year before that fly casting. So he was learning and I was very eager to learn how to fly cast. So we were out there after school and he'd be out there casting and showing me a little bit. And he said, Steve, you got to learn how to tournament cast. No, 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 no. I just want to go fishing. No, if you hit those targets, when you go fishing, you're going to be able to lay your fly right next to the fish. You're going to catch more. So you got to try this. All right, all right. So Mel coached me into my first tournament and I did horrible. It was dry fly accuracy and I was last place. And he said, that's it. I said, that's it. I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, he said, one more tournament. All right, one more tournament. Two weeks later, I entered the next one and I won. And right after that, all the club members, Phil Mir Valley, Ted Halverson, Cameron Ball, Emil Lewis, Russ Colliander, all these famous casters of the Golden Gate Club came over, try this, try this. And I had a very great support network from the members of the Golden Gate Angling Casting Club. And that's really what got me on a roll interested in more tournament casting. So eventually I got to my first nationals. I entered into the men's division. And in the all around championship of 12 events, I was third place in the men's. The following year, I was second. And the third year going into this thing, I won it. So I was the youngest to have won the nationals at age 15. And then the following year, I went to the world's tournament and, uh, and I won the world's tournament first time out, age 16. And that was the youngest to have won uh, international all around championship. And I had a keen interest of getting better and better equipment because I saw that the best equipment helps you to get that little edge on long casts or maybe a little more control for accuracy. And along the way, I had an opportunity to become the rod designer at G. Loomis, and I jumped at that chance. G. Loomis was started here in Woodland, Washington in 1982. Started up by Gary Loomis, very proud American, and he said, we're going to build our rods here and we're going to keep it here. Along the way, he contracted cancer and he said, you know, for the benefit of my family and I, uh, it's time to sell, but we want to have a company that's going to be here for the long haul. We want somebody that, you know, wants to, to, to keep this company intact, keep the people intact, and fund it to the level that it needs to be funded. And Gary had always uh, had a contact with Shimano USA. So one of the first things that was decided before the company was sold that G. Loomis stays here in Woodland, Washington, that all the rods are made here at our factory, and that we're not going to use outside sourcing to build our rods. And to this day, and it's been over 15 years now, we've been building all of our rods here at our factory in Woodland, Washington. Designing a rod is all about the performance for the value and for the application. Performance, does it cast right? Does it fish well? Does it have a feel? Does it load right? Does it perform and last? Does the reel seat work well? Do the ferrules assemble well? These are some of the attributes of what it needs to be done. And we design using the best materials for the value. Uh, there are materials that are greatly more expensive that we could put on there and just raise the price, but the performance wouldn't necessarily in, enhance. 
So it, it's a combination of using the right materials for that price point of product and making the best uh, fishing tool that you can make. As years go along, and there are breakthroughs in fiber that you can really definitely notice, hey, we latch onto those. But we don't just grab things for the buzz of it. It needs to perform. So we've had long durations where we said, you know, we're not coming out with it until something really made a difference. And at those times is when we've really made a splash. And well, we are a full line rod company. We do everything extremely well. These rods here have won so many tournaments. Top anglers use, we don't pay fishermen to use our rods. They use our rods because they want to. And there's been a lot of champion anglers, masters winners on the Bass Classics and we make rods that really flat out perform. So we have experts that are, you know, in the fishing world, owning lodges or, you know, traveling to the ends of the earth that need the best equipment. And we have the experience to know what is the ultimate or what needs to be out there for that application. And when you learn some things about certain rods, there's some cross pollinization. We learn a few things on lifting on tuna fishing that will help us to lift and fight big game fish on a fly rod or you know certain sensitivity things in bass you know how do you make a blank feel that little bit lighter so there is similarities and then there needs to be uniqueness between different types of fishing but we also have a bigger pool of information I think it helps all aspects. One of my things that I really enjoy doing is creating that next rod that just casts so perfect. And, and it may be a certain application, it may be a rod that can do a lot of things, but I just get a lot of joy out of designing something with either a new material or new taper and having that rod perform well. Because that's what I did as a kid. I mean, I really liked hitting the targets, I really like casting far, and that connection is just what I really enjoy. Um, so, I mean, I'm not an owner in this business or something, I'm an employee and I do it for a paycheck and I probably could earn an income doing other stuff, but I frankly just enjoy designing the rods and also getting to field test them sometimes.